Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefined Horizons. In this video, we are talking about closure reports. So if you're a land surveyor, you know what a closure report is. Uh, for those that don't know, it's kind of shorthand jargon. Um, it, it's uh, what we use as land surveyors to determine the geometrical uh, closure of a 2D, 2D polygon based on uh, its constituent parts or, or its elements, so the, li the lines and arcs that make up the, uh, the boundary of, the, of the, the polygon or the shape. So it's, a, it's an important part of uh, closure reports are, are an important element of what we do as surveyors, um, especially when we're doing boundary surveying and control surveying, uh, we use closure reports. So I've got some older videos on this channel that talk about how you manage closure reports in AutoCAD Civil 3D. I haven't used that uh, software program now for a few years, so my company switched over to Carlson Survey after Autodesk tried to blackmail us, which is another long story. So we've been using Carlson for a while. So I needed to do some new videos on on how we handle closure reports in Carlson Survey. And um, we, we need to get a little more organized about how we do this. Um, one of these days, I, I want to maybe write a little software application that, that helps manage closure reports. But until I retire and have time to do that, uh, we're gonna we're gonna come up with the best <laughs> the best system we can. So I've got a job open here that we've been working on for a couple years. I've been trying to get a lot line adjustment approved on a, a little pasture down down on the river south of Manteca, California. It's taken forever. Because COVID nineteen shut the shut the county down for quite a while, but we're finally getting ready to get that approved. So I'm turning in the land descriptions and the closure reports for the law line adjustment to the county surveyor. So there's a couple different ways you could manage closures. So you could put you know closures for a boundary survey. You could put in the boundary folder, right? Um, if they were for control, you could put them in field control. Um, but for what I'm doing um, and what, what I think I want us to do at our shop is we're going to keep our closures in the mapping folder. Um, closures for a control diagram can go in the field control folder. But uh, closures for any kind of, of boundary work products, so parcel maps, records of survey, land descriptions, those are going to go in the mapping folder because that's where we keep those products. And uh, I, I'm going to just start keeping those now in a folder called closures. Okay. Now you could, um, if you were, let's say you were writing a bunch of land descriptions, you could, as an alternative, let's just say create a folder in here. We'll call it land description packages. And then you could have a folder for each parcel. So let's just say these are right away takes. So right away take zero one. And then in each, the folder for each parcel each land description package you could you could put the closure okay and I'm, I'm not saying that's a bad system um, I think that there's a, there's some there, it's a good system and there's some advantages to that uh, but that's not the system that we're gonna use here at RH so we're gonna keep a just a closure folder at the at the root of the mapping folder and um, there's some trade-offs between those two different systems right so keeping your closure with the individual work product and having them kind of at a more top level folder and so the reason I'm, I'm going to do this for now is because we, we don't have a lot of jobs um, where we're managing you know hundreds of closures um, so and and it's, it's easier it can be easier if you have all your closure related files in a single location so that's why I'm going to use the this this system which is to closures folder under mapping um, instead of putting the closures with all of the individual work products. And uh, the other place that we'll store closures is we'll have a similar folder. We're going to call it uh, closures, same name. It'll be under field control. So we can put our uh, control diagram closures there. Okay, so uh, for, for our mapping products, which is mostly going to be boundary, boundary related stuff, what goes in the closures folder? Okay, so we're going to have a drawing called uh, Boundary Closure, BNDY, CLSR. That's going to be the closure drawing. That's going to keep all the polylines that have um, that we use to run the closures in Carlson Survey. And you're going to see we don't want anything else in that drawing. 
both the poly lines and a couple of X refs. So I'll show you that in a minute. I have it open. And then we're going to have our actual closures. Okay, so for each parcel, there will probably be a text file. This is what comes out of Carlson. It's called a polyline report. And then we'll have the actual uh, closure report that we format in a Word doc with, with a little, we pretty it up a little bit. That's what actually gets turned in with the deliverable. Okay, and this is just the template which I'll delete after we're done here. So this is in our RH templates, RH boundary folder. There's a closure report template uh, for Microsoft Word. Okay, so let's look at what's in this boundary closure drawing. So um, we have a couple XREFs. So we're going to XREF in um, our boundary line work drawing um, and our boundary design drawing. Now, if we're if we're only doing like a record of survey, we may not have a boundary a boundary design line work drawing. Um, we're only going to have a boundary design line work drawing when we're when we're doing new parcels. Okay, so easements or 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 new created fee parcels on a subdivision map, something like that. So in this case, I'm doing a lot line adjustment, and so we do have a design line. It's going to be it's the proposed line, the proposed the new proposed line between the two parcels. Okay, and I have those on the appropriate layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just I'm going to freeze them, but it's good to, it's good to keep them in the in the closures drawing because that's what you base your poly lines on, right? You base your poly lines on that underlying line work. But I'm just going to freeze them now. Okay, so I I have uh, four closures, four closure parcels in this drawing, and they're just poly lines. So this is a little simpler than what you would do in Civil 3D. So here's the the parcel that we're going to have after the lot line adjustment. This is uh, the first transfer parcel. So this parcel is going from um, the neighbor, which is a, a levy district, to our client. And then our client is giving this parcel from, it's going from their their land, the subject parcel, to the levy district. This is the levy along the, the uh, I believe it's the Stanislaus River that runs along right here. Okay, so I've got four parcels. We've got the subject parcel after the adjustment. We've, and we've got the two transfer parcels, and then I've got uh, another poly line here for the commencement. So this is this is actually the commencement lines right here, and this is a uh, a closing line. So I like to close out when I can on my commencement calls, and this is just a line that bridges the gap between the commencement lines coming in and the closure tie going back to the to the point of commencement. And these are layered, so uh, these are standard layers. This is, uh, let me pull this out for you guys a little bit, sorry. So this is survey boundary closure parcel commencement. And that, that actually, let me fix those layer names, guys, I'm sorry. So. It should have an S. So I apologize about that. Okay, so we've got commencement lines, commencement parcels, and then we've got the main parcels. Okay, so you can see the commencement polyline is on the commencement parcels layer, and these are on the main uh, the main parcels layer, closure parcels layer. Okay. So <clears throat> as a general rule, all of our closures. Uh, should be a closed a closed polyline, right? Should be a polygon. There may be rare exceptions to that, but that's a good general rule. Okay, so that's what's in that's what's in the closures drawing. This should get saved, you know, purged, audited, cleaned, saved. Okay, so how do you actually run a closure in Carlson Survey? So I'm going to show you how to do that. So I've got Carlson Survey pulled up here. I've got the closure drawing open. And uh, what you want to do is you want to run a polyline report. So I want to run, I'm going to show you how to run a, um, a closure for this uh, subject parcel after the adjustment. Okay, it's super easy compared to Civil 3D. So we're going to go to Survey, Polyline Tools, Polyline Report. And then we're going to select our polyline. Okay, and it's going to run this text file for us. Now, a couple things about that. It's going to use the direction of your polyline and the starting point of your polyline. So you have to be smart about how, how you draw your polyline. Okay, so for example, if I start my polyline here, 
and I run it clockwise, that's how the closure report's going to run, uh, the, the polygon report. If I start here, start my polygon here, and I, run, I draw it counterclockwise, that is also how the closure is going to run. Okay, so you got to be aware of that. And actually, now that I I said that, um, I think I might have done I, I might have done this. The, I might have gone backwards. Um, yeah, I did. Okay, so you don't want to do that. You don't want to go backwards. So we're gonna just fix that real quick, which is good because I should show you guys anyway. So I drew this. I drew this backwards. Okay, I want it. I want my closure to start here. Okay, and then we're just gonna trace over. So don't, don't do like me and not pay attention to that. And you'll notice when I'm crossing some lines here uh, that I am making sure I put an in point in, in because I want to um, I want to make sure that, that those show up in the uh, closure report as breaks. I don't think my curve runs down that far. Yeah, it doesn't. All right, we can fix that here in a minute. All right, I gotta fix this curve here. Oh man, I got major problems. I know that doesn't. If anybody has watched my videos for very long, they're not surprised that I'm having major problems. Let's try this again. So you can see right here, I could do this in a straight shot. This is one bearing, but I'm putting a break in there because I want to call out the old property line as I cross it in my land description. So that's how I, I want to break in the poly line that I'm going to use to run the closure. So I don't know why I wasn't picking that that um, I wasn't picking up that other uh, end of the curve there. Okay, so now I've got now I've got that polyline starting in the right spot at my point of beginning and drawn clockwise, which is the order I used for here. So now we can go to survey, polyline tools, polyline report. Okay, and it's going to run my report. You can hit that save button there and just save it directly if you want, but I've got it here. So we just call this, this is the subject parcel 01, so this is the parcel ID CLSR closure text. So this is just where we put the raw polyline report. Okay. So the next step is um, to actually take this information and get it prettied up in Word as an actual closure report. So let me show you how we do that. Sorry for my sniffling and rubbing my nose and my allergies are bothering me a little bit. Okay, so we're going to take this closure report template here and we're going to name it the same way. So this is subject parcel 01 closure, but this is a, a doc. Uh, XML uh, Word, Microsoft Word document. <clears throat> okay. So we want to clean a couple things up in here. Um, so we want to name the parcel. So subject parcel 01. And then I like to uh, put the job number here in the header and fix the date. So I need to, I'll, I'll make sure I save this back as our, as our updated template. All right, and it is, I don't even know what day it is. It's like July 10th. 9th. Nope, wrong, 8th. Okay. So then this is where we put the body okay, of the of the closure. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and um, <clears throat> we're going to we're going to copy this body down here. And it's going to copy the first part and then we've got to do some reformatting. Okay. So the way I like to do this as I do northing Easting. Okay, that's where the line starts. And then above this, I like to number my segments. So uh, we're going to say line segment. Um, I'm sorry, I think we just said segment one. Okay, so we put the northing and the easting. 
and then we're just going to have the bearing and distance of the course there. Okay, and you can round this. You can round that if you want. I'm going to go ahead and leave it for the county surveyor. He can see things to the thousandth if he wants. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do this. Um, we're just going to kind of follow this pattern, right? And obviously, you could set up a little macro to do this for you. If I had to do 200 of these, I would definitely do that. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and, and get that formatted. Let me pause the video while I finish that up. All right, guys. So um, I've got most of this done. I just want to show you how I'm cleaning up the curve here. So I added the northing and easting prefixes here. Um, I'm gonna put the radius, and then these up uh, these other some of these other elements have more than one um, more than one. Uh, kind of sub-element, so like the cord has a distance and a bearing. So I'm just cleaning this up a little bit. Carlson has some, you know, some abbreviations in here and stuff that I don't love. So I just indented three spaces there. That's how I got those, um, and you could even you could even bullet list these if you want. Okay, so Same thing here, we'll do this, we'll do that with the radius point too. So we're just cleaning up some of these abbreviations. Okay, so that's how our curve looks now. A little nicer. I like to have my foot ticks in here too. those and then um, I, I like to add these um, let me finish my flip ticks here I like to add these uh, segment labels because uh, if, if you if, if you get a complicated submittal with a lot of um, closures it's helpful to label the, uh, the line segments for the reviewing surveyor it's a kind thing to do makes the review the reviews go a little quicker. So I like to just number these. I also uh, try not to let um, let them get split by page, that the individual close closure segments, so you can just drop in a page break, insert a page break to do that. Okay, and even though this is a curve, oops, I still call it a segment. It's still a segment. So we'll get all these segment labels in here. We're deleting these, um, deleting some of this white space. So this again, we're just cleaning up the, uh, we're just cleaning up the raw polyline report that came out of Carlson. there look at what I got Let's see here seven sixty six seven six six eight okay let's see here so 
this isn't the segment. This is actually the closing coordinate. Okay, and then you've got this information here, so if there's no closure error, it gives you the perimeter, and then I just like to clean this up here. Um, so if my um, if my area is bigger than eight, than an acre, I don't show square feet, I just show acres. Okay. Um, and that's actually that's actually from the, from the template, sorry. Okay, um, and then I usually like to make these uh, just colons instead of those greater than symbols. All right, so now we've got the closure report all cleaned up. So this is what we actually send in. Okay, this is what we send to the county surveyor or whoever's reviewing the the actual survey submittal. Okay, so we'll save that. And we're going to uh, save it, also save it as a PDF. Okay, there's our PDF of our closure report. Okay, so these are all done. So that's basically the system. Okay, so we've got the boundary closure drawing that holds the poly lines, the X ref to the boundary line work drawings. And then uh, we have our, our text files. This is the parcel ID with the abbreviation for closure. Those text files are just the raw polyline report that comes out of Carlson. Okay. And then um, then we have the, uh, the, we clean that up and actually create a closure with it. Um, that, uh, that, get, that also gets, oh, I took the template name. That also gets PDF'd. Let's try that again real quick. So ultimately what will go to the uh, the reviewing surveyor, uh, they are not going to get, they're just going to get the PDF closure report. They're not going to get the drawing or the, uh, the text files that are the raw output from Carlson. And again, all this is going to go in the mapping closures folder. So there'll be there should, when you're done, there should be three files for each parcel. There should be the text file with the with the polyon report from Carlson Survey. There should be the Word doc where we clean that up and format it, and then there should be the PDF version of the Word doc, which is the the closure report that goes to the reviewing surveyor. So, all right, guys, appreciate you watching. I know that was about twice as long as my normal video, but now you folks will understand uh, how we run closures using Carlson Survey here at RH.